Hey scientists, grab your lab coats and your goggles as today we are going to explore how natural resources provide the materials we need for our everyday items that we use. Before we get into that, let's first talk about our essential questions. Now let's talk about our essential question. Remember, essential questions in science and in different lessons can help us think about what we already know about a topic and it helps us connect to new ideas that we're going to learn today to help us produce a, new, produce a new thought about the topic. Our essential questions will be focused on our different science topic, topics. So look for keywords. In those keywords, the minute you see them and recognize them, I want you to think, what do I already know about this topic? Once you have that in your mind, you want to look at the question again to see what we're trying to answer today or what are we trying to answer about that topic. It's important to remember that an essential question is like a goal as well. By the end of our science lesson, you should confidently be able to answer the essential question. Let's go over our essential question for today. Listen as I read the first essential question. What are some natural resources that come from the earth? Read that one with me. What are some natural resources that come from the earth? Listen as I read the second essential question. What characteristics of natural resources make them useful to us? Read that one along with me. What characteristics of natural resources make them useful to us? And our last essential question, how can natural resources be conserved? Read that last one with me. How can natural resources be conserved? Nice job. Let's get into today's lesson. Let's start off with something quick today before we get into what kind of stations and activities we will be doing. First, let's think about or actually look at what is our t-shirt made of? On the screen, I'm going to circle two places that you can find where your t-shirt is made of. There's a tag that might be on the back of your shirt, and there's a tag that might be on the side of your shirt. Look for that tab, pause the video now, and raise your hand when you find what your shirt is made out of. List the materials that you find on the board as a class. During your exploration and trying to find what was your t-shirt made out of, did any of you say that your t-shirt was made out of cotton? When I look down at the tag of my shirt, it says 100% cotton, and that's not the only thing I notice. There's all different kinds of clothing items that are made out of cotton. But where does this cotton come from, and how does this have to do with what we're going to do in our science activities today? Well, cotton is actually a natural resource, and it's a natural resource that we use in our everyday lives when we pick out different pieces of clothes to wear. Now, cotton, is, an, like I said, is a natural resource, and as a natural resource, cotton is a plant. Here's a picture of what a cotton plant actually looks like. Today, we are going to spend some more time getting our hands on and exploring different natural resources that we use in our everyday lives and where they come from in the real world, where we would actually see them or where they all start. Let's look at how we're going to explore these different natural resources in our stations today. For our exploration today, we are going to start with our exploring in a two-part activity where you will be able to explore and identify natural materials that were used to make common everyday items. And then we will learn how to classify these items and different objects according to the types of materials that they are made out of. How we are going to do this is breaking it into two simple parts. Part one is going to be sorting the resources, and part two is going to be classifying the resources. Let's get into part one now. When we talk about describing different types of natural materials and natural resources, we want to be able to use different types of properties of matters in our description so that we're able to easy, easily identify and classify specific objects into different categories. Let's go over some of those properties of matters and their definitions now. Let's talk about our first word, flexible. Write these words down on your student journal or on the back of your explanation sheets for the different activities so that you're able to reference them for these activities. Let's talk about flexible. Flexible means it's easy to bend. That means items like 
bendy straws or if you ever had a pencil that was funky and fun where you could fold it and bend it all around. Those are different examples of being flexible. The opposite of flexible is rigid. That means an item will not bend easily. Kind of like a normal number two pencil that you might be using to write with. The next item or property of matter that you could use to describe an item would be calling something strong. And that means it will not break easily. Like a piece of wood. You need special equipment to break down larger pieces of wood. The opposite of strong is breakable. And that means that something is easily broken. That could be like a piece of glass that you might use for glassware at your house. The next property of matter that we might use to describe an item is the word transparent. And that means you can see through an through the item. So an example of that might be a fishbowl if you have one at home. Or previously, like we said, a clear glass, you can see through that. The last property of matter that I'm going to review with you today is the opposite of transparent, which is opaque. Opaque means you can not see through the item. So that might be something like a solid wood door or even a piece of food like a banana. In part one of this activity, sorting resources, you are going to see some different items that your teacher has. It might be a plastic water bottle, a t-shirt, maybe a metal object, a glass bottle. Make sure you are careful with the items if you are able to handle them. You guys are going to have a discussion as a group and share your responses out. There's also a reference sheet that your teacher is going to show you and hang up so you're able to look at it. After you guys go through and talk about it as a group, you're going to go through a discovery box. In this discovery box, you're going to become inventors and product designers who must understand the properties, those are the vocabulary words we just visited a minute ago, of each of the materials and work with them. You'll be looking at similar objects made of different materials. You'll see what I mean by that later. And you'll look at similar materials used to make different objects as well. As you are going through and making your observations, make sure you use those key vocabulary words in comparing the properties. Those vocabulary words that we reviewed in the beginning, those properties of matter, are going to be key in your conversation and helping you identify the different objects and how they may be similar materials or how they may be different materials. After you are able to look through the activities, you're going to explore and write your observations down in your student journals. This will take a little bit of time. You will work in your groups of about three or five students. Gather your observations for step two. Then you'll take some more time independently, and you can also use your group's help to record your observations in your student journals. If time allows, after your student journals, take the time to set up your drawings that you added into your journals and allow each group to go around to see how the other groups sorted their materials. Did you sort them the same or did you guys have different categories for how you identified the properties of the materials that were in front of you? Pause the video and come back before you get to hear what's going to happen in part two. This activity may take two days, so make sure you take your time in having your discussions and recording your observations in your student journals. Pause the video now, and I'll see you guys for part two in a little bit. Part two of this exploration is called classifying resources. If you guys are starting on day two, make sure you have your discovery boxes from the previous day, but leave the materials in there until all the directions are explained to you. We're gonna start off this activity by making our five tabbed folding graphic organizer. Watch me as I make the graphic organizer here. The first step for this graphic organizer is to fold your paper hot dog style. After folding your paper hot dog style, open it up and draw a line down the crease. That crease is the middle part of your paper. It's also, in math terms, your line of symmetry. On your left side of your paper, you are going to create five different tabs. Watch how I do this as I take my pencil and I draw my lines across my paper, creating those equal boxes. Next step is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut those five equal boxes out. That way I'm able to use them as different tabs. 
Now I can fold my five different tabs back over and I have a place to write different categories. And then I have a place to write information underneath each of those categories. To help me stay organized, I'm gonna flip up one side of these right now and draw a line. That way it's easy to divide them if my materials or my graphic organizer is flipped upwards. After I am finished with making this graphic organizer, I'm gonna glue it into my science notebook and I'm going to label the five tabs. I'll tell you what we'll label those five tabs in a second. Pause the video now and make the graphic organizer as a class. If you need to rewind the video, do so, then go step by step. Categories that we are going to label with a pencil or a marker on the top of each of our tabs are listed on the board. They are metal, plastic, wood, paper, and cotton. Once you have these all labeled and your graphic organizers are glued into your notebooks and your teacher and the entire class is ready to go, I'm going to explain what we are going to do with this graphic organizer in classifying resources. Classifying resources, here's how the activity is going to go. We have already made our five tab folding graphic organizer, so we can check that off the list. We are going to be sorting different objects by the materials that they are made up from. Here's a hint. That means we're going to classify them by what they are made out of not by what the objects actually are. For this activity, we have to think about what natural resources do we get each type of material from? And also what characteristics or properties of the materials can we use to help describe them? Those are those six key words that we reviewed before we did part one of this activity. You guys will have different times to discuss with your group that you worked with yesterday and then you will have time to talk as a class as well. Your goal by the end of this activity with your group is to fill out your five tab graphic organizer as well as your part two of your student explore journal as you work through identifying and categorizing the different objects into either metal, plastic, wood, paper, or cotton five natural resources that we use in our everyday lives. As you explore, make sure each group member gets a chance to talk and you listen closely to your classmates' observations and ideas as someone else might have thought of something that you didn't think of yourself. Record your observations carefully in your student journals and handle the materials with care. I'll see you soon, scientist.